and welcome back to Otaku No Video. As always, thank you very much for joining me. Where today I'm reviewing Wolf Children, Yuki and Ame, a film by Mamoru Hosoda, famous for making The Girl Who Left Through Time, Summer Wars, and The Boy and the Beast. And having seen The Girl Who Left Through Time and Summer Wars, this film is a little different. Hosoda has, for a long time, been operating, in a sense, in, a, in the shadow of his former work. Um, he first got his big break working on the Digimon anime series, and introduced some interesting things there. And um, The Girl Who Left Through Time and Summer Wars both feel like they are um, still in that mode of telling a fun, entertaining story that just kind of, I don't know, um, it, they're very clear. And um, there can be a lot of different characters. Um, but Wolf Children is a different beast, if you will. It's about raising children. And about what it's like as a parent when you're having to struggle with, well, very unusual children, as you can kind of see from the artwork there, right? Um, so it's about motherhood in, in a real way. Um, and it has high highs and low lows. There, there are funny moments and there are very sad moments in the film. And what's great about Hosoda is that he plays those moments out. Um, as we saw in Summer Wars, he will let you sit with pain and sit with joy, as you can see, which is very different. This is a very differently paced film than a lot of things you may get you may be used to. Um, there's no big impending doom coming up. There's no um, massive change to a character's life beyond, you know, dealing with kids, dealing with, with having kids. Um, this is just about, frankly, again, what it's like to live with your choices of having these kids and and what parenthood is like. Um, and you'll, you'll notice I'm being kind of cagey about the plot because I think that's kind of important to not reveal what happens in the movie. Um, I will say that the movie does cover a lot of ground. It covers basically the first 10 years of these kids' lives, um, 10 or 12. Um, so yeah, there's, there's actually a lot of, I mean, kids change a lot in that time. And so it's gratifying to see a film with that kind of a scope of seeing um, the impact of parenthood on these young lives. Now, the animation is, as you can imagine, from a, uh, a movie of this caliber, somebody who's been doing movies for a little while now, the animation is resoundingly, consistently beautiful. Um, there is just care and detail to this film um, in a level that you just, you will very rarely see. Um, and uh, again, I say that as somebody who loves film, where there's just, there's a lot, um, I, I love animation, and there is just so much attention paid to all these little details of action and movement. Uh, in a movie that's not, not an action movie, you know, this is a, a domestic drama, fundamentally, uh, but all those little details of how people move and walk and talk and interact with each other are absolutely there. It's, it's really, really impressive. Um, and to that point, it's impressively directed as well, where you will see how characters um, relate to each other, sometimes from a distance. Um, there's a lot of stuff early on in the film where the characters, and you can see here, where the characters are at a distance from each other because they're a distance from each other emotionally. And they get closer and closer and closer. Um, then there's the pacing of the film and just how he how he reveals 
the themes of the movie very slowly and very deliberately as these characters are interacting. Um, it's just, it just very impressive. Again, where you got a film that's not... that doesn't have a big, driving, obvious plot idea. It's not like Your Name, where, okay, we're switching bodies. What does that mean? You know, that, that, that has inherent drama in it. This is about people living with each other and what that means. Um, and so the direction just absolutely gets that across, but in a very clear way. And there's another interesting thing about, thing about the movie is that um, it's not complex. There's not a lot of weird symbolism. There's not a lot of weird imagery. Um, I mean, yes, you have these kids who are popping in and out of wolf form, but you know, it's not Princess Mononoke. It's not a Satoshi Kone film where there are multiple layers operating at once. Um, it's a domestic drama that manages to be incredibly evol um, um, to suck you in, to make you care about these characters in their situation. Even if you don't like kids, even if you don't get these these specific things, you care about these characters. And that is just so important in a movie like this, where you absolutely, you know, you're... You're connected to these characters in this very, very impressive way. Um, now, some folks are going to kind of balk at this whole idea of, you know, you, she has kids who turn into wolves? Really? Believe me, it works within the context of the film. It's a little weird, but because Hosoda is so good at grounding even odd concepts, this is something he's been doing for a long time, you know, in Summer Wars and Girls Up Through Time, they both have these odd premises that he manages to make feel very believable and relatable because he grounds you in their everyday life. Um, you know, he doesn't start with fantasy, he starts with real life and then introduces this fantastical element so that you can then understand that and that, that informs their real life. This is about real people. Very, very real people. Uh, finally, I just want to touch on the dub that is available. I was incredibly impressed with the dub of Wolf Children, the English dub of Wolf Children. Uh, I think it captured all of these characters' personalities extremely well, uh, and it doesn't feel like an, um, a stereotypical anime dub. You know, they they didn't try to make the characters sound you know squeaky Japanese or anything. They are just people, very naturalistic, very normal, um, which is again something I, I really appreciate. I think is very important for the film to make it feel real and feel serious about what's actually going on with these characters. Um, so as you can tell, I was very impressed with Wolf Children, which is weird for me, because I like multi-layered stories. I like complexity. I like symbolism. And there's very little of that in the film. There is some. Um, indeed, the very premise, I believe, is a, a metaphor for having kids with unusual needs and how hard that can be. But, ultimately, this is a very clear film. It's a very, for lack of a better term, an obvious film, in the best way. You understand what these characters feel, and what they care about. And I think that is a great, a great asset. This is a film where you will... You can get completely involved in this film. You can get completely sucked into this film and its world and be transported not just in sense of the world but also in the sense of your emotions. You will walk in these characters' shoes for two hours. And I think it's a very valuable thing to, to do. So those are my thoughts on Wolf Children. I hope that is useful. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.